Welcome to Tech Primers. In this video, we are going to see how to design microservices using a microservices architecture. Okay, so we are going to see Uber's architecture uh, and we are going to use that as a case study. So what we are going to do is we are going to see uh, Uber's architecture before it was transformed into a microservices architecture, uh, which was a, basically a monolithic architecture. And then we are going to compare that with the microservices architecture with which Uber went ahead and changed their architecture into a microservices design pattern. So this particular uh, video will help you in uh, understanding how the monolith uh, got split into different microservices and how Uber is uh, tackling it. So we are going to take Uber's architecture um, as a case study. So this particular um, architecture is available in the Uber website, but I, I'm just going to cover uh, what is um, the monolithic application which Uber had and what is the microservices application which is currently there okay so if you notice here this is the monolithic architecture of uber so if i need to go through right so there is a rest api with which the passenger and the driver connect so from the mobile right see from the mobile app it connects to a rest api so it's literally like how we access a website right so the app is going to connect to a rest api and that is going to connect to a uh, monolithic application okay which is a backend server same way from the web UI, if you are accessing, that is also going to, going to connect to the same uh, server. Same way, there is something called Stripe adapter. So Stripe is for um, uh, doing billing. Uh, so there are APIs um, which are available in the inside the Stripe. So the Stripe adapter will uh, uh, give some uh, billing applications out of the box. Okay, SendGrid is um, uh, for sending the mails. So if you want to automatically send mails um, to different a mail host with secured um, with security um, stuff so you can use 10 grid api uh, the next one is the uh, twilio adapter so twilio adapter is for sending messages so whenever we get any um, cab book right you get a message right so that is done by the twilio adapter finally the mysql adapter with which um, the data is stored in the database okay so which is the mysql database so this is the monolithic application architecture which uh, uber was running uh, when it was initially launched if you notice the application has internally the passenger management the billing notification payments trip management driver management all these were composed in a single application so basically this was running in a single monolithic application and these were different apis uh, different processes which were connecting to the uh, monolithic application so this is a kind of distributed um, architecture however it is a monolithic architecture because everything connects to a single server right so if you if i want to change something in the billing right if i want to change something in the billing i have to still release the whole application right even though i'm not changing the notifications or the payments i have to create a version of the whole application and then i have to release it right so that is the disadvantage of a monolithic architecture so what uber did is uber went ahead and refactored this whole architecture okay so how uber is currently is this is how uber is currently so this is the microservices architecture with which Uber is running. So there could be uh, more processes or less processes compared to this architecture because it's a little bit old. But still, uh, this is the new microservices architecture which, which Uber went live from the monolithic architecture. If you notice here, what is the major changes? There is an API gateway uh, through which the mobiles are connected. Okay, from the API gateway, all the internal REST endpoints are connected. So if you see here, from the API gateway, the passenger management is connected, driver management is connected, trip management is connected. So literally anybody can connect to the API gateway and from there it gets routed to different microservices. So all these are individually separate deployable units. So that is why they call they are called as microservices so that you can individually deploy them without having to deploy all the other application. Right? If you want to change something in the notification, you can separately deploy notifications. Right, if you see notifications as two different types, the Twilio adapter and the SendGrid for mail and the messages. For billing, we are using this Stripe API. So it's just the same thing, just that the uh, architecture is now split uh, split based on functionalities or domain. So if you see, all these are functionalities, right? The passenger management, billing, payments, notification, trip management, driver management. All these are functionalities. So that is how Uber has split their uh, microservices, um, and this is how they are using um, their backend services okay so if let's say you are um, going to design some application right so this is how you will have to think so if you want to move to microservices architecture and you want to 
um, make sure that you you can deploy them individually okay you can use this type of architecture and then you can split them based on your domain or the functional usage right also uh, if you want to go to microservices architecture don't go just for the sake of uh, using microservices architecture make sure microservices architecture is going to be useful for example in in this case of uber uber right if there are, if the payment is going to be done um, uh, very less number of times compared to the uh, the passenger management right so the user uh, the passenger is going to search for his cab more frequently than the payments right so once you um, onboard to onboard the cab and then you finish off the trip that's when the payment is going to be done so the number of uh, processes which you want to scale this passenger management might be more compared to the payments right because you might have uh, lots of users who are searching for the cabs than the number of people who are doing the payments right so that is why this architecture is split so that individually you can scale up and scale down okay so that is the major reason uh, uber went ahead and created this microservices architecture and adapted to that so if you think that if you are designing an application if it doesn't need um, any scalability uh, per se then you don't have to split that you can keep it as a monolith but you should know when to create a microservice and then when to not create microservice because when you start creating microservices you have to uh, take care of um, individually uh, the process individually because if let's say this passenger management is down so what will happen to the payments what will happen to the other uh, what will what will the api gateway respond with right so all those resiliencies needs to be taken care individually in every microservice right it's not only with the passenger management but also with every microservice you will have to create the resiliency design pattern and you will have to handle that um, separately if you have a single monolithic application you would have done that as a single application but here since you split the application into many parts you will have to handle that in every part of the application right so that the uh, issues are not escalated till the source so for example if the building is down right you should not throw an exception to the trip management and trip management shouldn't throw it back to the api gateway to the mobile you should not do that right so you will have to efficiently handle that so that is that is what you need to handle as a part of microservices so when you go into microservices design pattern you should uh, handle lots of stuff apart from the um, existing resilience so you should make sure that you are handling that and then that plan for it and then move to microservice architecture so this is just a simple example of uber um, which i wanted to cover so um, in a day or two i will just uh, uh, create a hands on video with spring boot application or spring cloud application to create uh, something similar i'm not going to show um, uh, how to create for uber but we can create something for an e-commerce site or something like that so uh, if you have any suggestions for some design pattern i can take that up as well because i don't have an idea currently so if you have any idea um, on which i can create an example so that it will be useful for you just drop that in the comment section below i will uh, go ahead and create an architect microservices architecture and then we can walk through that and then we will have some hands-on coding with the um, uh, microservices design right so that's it for this particular video uh, I, I hope you understood what is the major difference between the monolithic application and the microservices um, pattern and how uber has uh, moved from the monolithic pattern to the microservices pattern and why they did that so that's it for this particular video meet you again in the next video thank you very much <music>